guys, I'm Evelyn and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. So today we're building another tiny house. Like I said earlier in this week, I was going to be doing mainly tiny houses this week. There is an apartment going up on Sunday, but other than that, it'll just be tiny houses. So you've seen two by now and then I have another one going up before the apartment and then I'll be home on Monday to record some other stuff. I did promise to do one tiny house next week, but I think I'll be doing fewer during next week, possibly, just because I've had, like, there's been a lot of tidy houses up on the channel lately, and I kind of want to do something else. I miss bigger houses, sort of, so I'll probably be building some 30 by 20s, maybe some 40 by 30s. I do have some house shells as well that I gotta finish, so we'll see about that. But like I said, earlier on this week, mainly tiny houses, so hopefully you guys don't mind. But the one that we're building today is actually inspired by a barn, which I know is a little bit different. And as you can see right now, I started out building it as a one-story house, but it just didn't look enough like a barn, because it kind of looked like a trailer with a round roof, and I wasn't feeling it. I really wanted this to look like a proper barn, so I actually had to change it to a two-story house. I had to make some changes here and there, <laughs> such as adding a second story to the house, obviously, but also because I really wanted to make sure that I had the proper gambrel roofing. So gambrel roofing is the kind of roofing that you would, like this one, it's split up into three pieces in The Sims, so it gets that proper angle on like closer to the top of the roof. I'm not making much sense, but I don't know how else to explain it. It just has this sort of angle on the roofing. So you see a lot of barns that have either, or yeah, I feel like the most of them have this kind of roofing, at least in my mind they do, but, or possibly just like a normal triangle shaped roofing as well, but I really wanted this to have gambrel roofing, so I had to add a second story, as you can see. I ended up putting the dining area up there. I was considering putting the bedroom up there at first, but it was a little bit too small for that, so I decided to keep the bedroom on the ground floor and also the kitchen. And there isn't much of a living area, to be honest, but because I'm building on a 30 by 20 actually in Brindleton Bay, because I really wanted to put this over in the rural area of Brindleton Bay, so they don't have any lots that are smaller than 30 by 20s. I kind of had to go for this lot, unfortunately. It's quite a big lot for a tiny house. But of course, with the theme of this house, I had to put it in this area, so that's just how it is this time. And you'll see that the floor plan is very weird because I had to put a staircase up to the second floor, but the second floor is only three tiles wide and the ground floor is five, so there is this very small narrow room in the right side of the ground floor. Yeah, on the right side of the ground floor, you guys get what I mean, where I actually ended up putting the laundry machines. I believe they also have a clothesline outside just in case they want to dry their clothes outside if it's sunny one day, but I did manage to put both laundry machines inside as well, so they can just use the indoors one if they want to. And this house is actually only for one sim, but I did make sure to make room for a dog as well because I thought it would be super cute if we had some kind of single sim living here in this tiny barn house with a dog, and that's why they also have this sort of or forgot what that's called, agility course thing outside as well. I used some of the dog stuff that came with cats and dogs, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, not my first pet stuff pack, don't worry. But it came with cats and dogs and it's this kind of agility course thing, like these tubes that you can put outside and the dog will run through them and it's really cute. I just thought it would be super adorable to put those in the yard as well so the person that lives in this tiny barn house can play with the dog outside as well. They also have a little farming area too because I thought that would be adorable and of course also go really well with the theme of the house and also because I had extra space because I'm on a 30 by 20 and I'm building a tiny house. I think this house took up less than a quarter of the lot or something. I don't even think the rest of the garden takes up the entire the entire lot either so there's quite a lot of extra space on this lot but hopefully it's okay with you guys I actually also added a pond 
with a fishing sign as well. So if your sim wants to fish in their own garden, they can do that because if you take one of the fishing signs from the debug catalog and you put it either next to a pool or a makeshift pond as well that you've made with the fountain tool, your sims will actually be able to fish in the pool or the makeshift fountain pond. You guys get what I mean, like the pond. It's not a pond because we don't have pond tools yet, Hopefully we'll get it one day, that would be freaking awesome. For now we'll just have to make do with the fountain tool or the pool tool. Pool tool is such a funny word to say by the way, just want to point that out. But anyways, my point was that if you put, put a fishing sign next to either of those, your sims can actually fish in it. So I thought that was pretty fun and I thought it would be fitting for the theme of the house as well, so I decided to put one of those outside. But anyways, so this is the upstairs, this is where I put the dining area and it's just a very cozy little space. They have these kind of open windows, so it's not actually, they don't count as open windows, they count as proper windows, so this room is actually properly closed off so during winter it doesn't affect gameplay in any way, it's just for decor. So they just look a little bit different, but they still work as windows, which I like, to be honest. I like that it uh, it doesn't limit, like, it doesn't affect the gameplay, so it's easier to use these sort of windows, not really windows. I don't know, what are they called? Open windows? Windowless windows? I don't fully know, but I like to use them sometimes. I like that they add a little bit extra to a build. But I like this little area up here on the second floor. It's very cozy in my opinion and I did decorate it just a little bit so they do have a couple of paintings on the wall and there is also one of those hallway tables with some candles on it and also a kitchen roll and some other stuff that I thought would kind of fit a dining area setting so yeah anyways very cozy little cute area up there and this is the bedroom so as you can see it's just for one sim and this is where I realized that I forgot to put in a food bowl as well so I just had to go back to the kitchen very quickly to place one there and yeah it's just very very small very weird shaped um bedroom to be honest because the staircase like again I was having a few issues with the floor plan because of the second floor but I really thought it would be cute if there was an area upstairs where they could sit and eat I don't know so I had to put in a staircase I could have kept it open technically but that meant I don't know, that would have looked kind of weird from the ground floor as well. I think it, it would have looked better with the dining area up there, so I'm glad that I stuck to it. <laughs> Anyways, I put some uh, random paintings as well on the walls here and there in the bedroom. I feel like the sim that lives here kind of collects a few things. They're not a hoarder, so they don't have stuff lying everywhere on the floor, but like paintings and maybe they're kind of in their 60s or something. 70s possibly something like that so throughout the years they've been able to gather paintings and stuff from family and friends or maybe they've made some of them themselves I don't fully know so I figured it would be kind of cute and fitting for the theme as well if I put some paintings here and there in the bedroom so I think on every single wall there should be at least one painting in there and I, I kind of like that so yeah we moved on to the exterior again so we have a lot of landscaping to do like compared to some of the other tiny houses that I've done this week or that I'm doing. <laughs> um, there's another one going up to more... I just don't know when this video is going up. This might possibly be a Thursday build and if it's not then it's a Friday build. So the next house that's going up is built in Oasis Springs. So there's a little bit less landscaping again just like Tuesday speed build, a little bit minimal but I feel like there's still more going on in Saturday's build actually. I don't know I hope you guys will like that one but I'm not gonna sit here and spoil the theme or anything. So yeah we do have a lot of the landscaping to do here because I actually went into the debug catalog again to get the these plants so they are planted if you download this from the gallery there will be like proper planted seeds there I don't remember every single plant that I placed down or every single seat but there should be some flowers and some vegetables possibly some fruit I also placed some of the bigger plant boxes as well or plant yeah plant boxes they're the bigger ones so they're not just the small pots um, where you can place some trees in as well if you want to but I just didn't want to do that beforehand so you're gonna have to figure out how to get those seats in game if you want to plant some trees but there should be like like, the opportunity to do that is there as well. And it is bothering me a little bit that I'm using the same fence on the ground that I'm doing at the front porch, but it was just, 
It's the one that fits Brindleton Bay perfectly, and it's also the one that fits Barnes perfectly, so I had to stick to it. Plus, also because I really wanted to be able to use that gate, and the gate doesn't really fit with any of the other fences in my mind, or in my opinion. So I just stuck to it. Just ignore it if that bothers you too. It, it does bother me a little bit. So I shifted up the shape of the fence a tiny bit just to... It was looking way too squared for me, so I just decided to delete a couple of... Like, just add some shape to the fence, basically, so it's not just a square. I felt like it fit the area better as well, and also just, like, yeah, the overall landscaping around this lot, too. And I think I'm using mainly the same trees as the landscaping surrounding this lot, so just cats and dogs trees, actually. Actually, there is one tree in this area that's from Outdoor Retreat, which I find really strange, to be honest. Like, why would there be... In Brindleton Bay, a tree from Outdoor Retreat. What is it doing there? How did it end up there? But I decided to go for the same tree here in the front yard because I knew it was going to be somewhere in this area. So I kind of wanted to make it cohesive and therefore I had to include it in my build. But I still feel like it's weird. Like why would there be a tree from another pack and it's not base game, but it's it's in Cats and Dogs. It's weird, okay? It's just weird to me. Speaking of packs, I really hope that they did not announce a new pack this week because I'm not home and that would suck big time. It would be typical. Actually, no, it wouldn't be typical because it, it's never happened before, but it would be kind of annoying <laughs> to me that they would... Because um, I don't really leave the house often. I don't really go on vacations, I don't go on many trips either, not weekend trips or anything, so it would be kind of a big bummer if they happen to announce a pack this one week where I'm gone to Denmark. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that they didn't, but I'm kind of counting on them doing that, to be honest. I feel like it's about time, like, we're missing Moschino stuff pack. It should... It should have been out by now, right? Like, I'm not the only one thinking that. I feel like it should have been out by now, but I don't fully know. Let me know what you guys think. Also, if it's already been announced, I... Well, there you go. Anyways, so we are getting to the end of this video, so I'm gonna wrap up this voiceover now. If you like this build, you can download it off the gallery. My ID is EvelynYT, and you can also find it under the hashtag Evelyn or EvelynYT. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you did. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye! It feels like it's been forever Laughing all day